The office intercom rang, and it was the manager at the other end. Come over to my office, now, the manager said and hung up. Pamela was alarmed by how stern the manager's voice was. She picked up her phone and hurried to his office. The manager was on call as Pamela walked into his office. He signaled her to have a seat and pointed at an envelope lying on the desk. Pamela reached for the envelope and quickly took out the letter in it. As soon as she read through the first line, her heart jumped. A sack letter. I'm confused, sir. What is this for? Pamela asked as the manager dropped the phone. Pamela, we are downsizing, and over 200 of our employees across are affected, not just you. I'm sorry, the manager replied. But I don't get it. What did I do wrong? I've been very dedicated to my job, and you know that. Pamela said, tears wailing up her eyes. As I said, over 200 of our employees just lost their jobs today, you inclusive. None of you committed any offense. We are just trying to manage the recession hitting the country's economy at the moment. I'm sorry, but this was not my decision. It could have been me. It was entirely the decision of the board of directors of the bank, replied the manager. It's been a pleasure working with you, continued the manager. Pamela was so frustrated to reply to him, and just as she stood up to leave his office, her phone rang. The voice from the other end of the phone identified as one of the paramedics currently a part of a rescuing team at the site of a plane crash. He informed her that her number was identified as a relative to one of the victims of a plane crash that happened two hours ago. She quickly ran off, her heart beating heavily. Pamela was at a crossroads. She just received the worst news ever in her entire life. Her family was in the plane that crashed into the Potomac River. There was no survivor. The caller further revealed that the remains of the victims were taken to the George Washington University Hospital in D.C. She didn't know what to do at the moment. Should she drive straight to the hospital? No, she hesitated. She wasn't sure if she could stand the sight of whatever was waiting for her at the hospital. She needed a company. Eric and Naomi were the only names that came to mind. But she was worried. Naomi's number was still unavailable. Could it be that Naomi was among the passengers on that plane? She thought and became more worried as she sat fixed in her car, trembling. She dialed Eric's number and got the same message she got from Naomi. She drove straight to the hospital where he worked but was shocked to learn that he didn't show up at work, and instead called in sick. But he said he was at work when they spoke in the morning, she thought. Something didn't feel right. She hastily drove to his apartment. As she was about to buzz the doorbell to the main entrance to the building where Eric lived, one of the co-tenants opened the door and let her in as he recognized her. Having the spare key to Eric's apartment, Pamela quickly unlocked the door and walked in. There was no one in the living room. She noticed that the door to his room was slightly opened. As she walked closer, she heard a female voice mourning ecstatically. Her heartbeat increased faster as she tiptoed to the door. As she opened, the sight before her sent cold chills down her spine and left her frozen, instantly. Naomi and Eric were lurked in each other's arms, naked. As soon as Naomi saw Pamela, she pushed Eric off her and buried her face in shame on the mattress. Eric couldn't utter a word either. He just sat there with his face bowed in shame. With tears flowing uncontrollably, Pamela turned and ran off. She drove off immediately, and never looked back. There was nothing left to see. And here Pamela was in her room, staring at the piece of paper before her. There was no way to undo the past. Naomi, her best friend, and Eric, the man she thought she knew, had betrayed her, her family had gone with the wind. The sight at the mortuary as she identified the corpses of her dad, mom, brother, and Anna, was an eyesore. She cried loudly, shaking profusely. No! I can't bear this, she said amidst sobs. 
She opened the drawer of the table and brought out a bottle containing a green liquid. She uncorked the bottle and placed it on the table. Picking the pen this time, she started writing with trembling hands. Life. What a nightmare you are. I used to think that you are beautiful, such a beautiful dream filled with sweet fragrance from a bed of roses made for me to lie on, while I fulfill my endless fantasies. How was I to know that you are just a fiction, a scam, looking for whom to defraud of their last drop of happiness? You took away my happiness. What else do you want except my life? Well, I will offer it to you if that will massage your ego. She paused and looked at the bottle. As though she weighed the content of the bottle, Pamela began to sob deeply, almost wetting the paper before her. Mom. Dad. I know you can hear me. This wasn't part of the plan. How could you leave me all alone? Today, I lost my job. Today, Eric made out with Naomi. Today, you all left me. How do I survive this? Dad. You didn't prepare me for a life without you, she finished and broke down and cried. She picked up the bottle and flung it, splashing against the wall, squeezed the paper she had just written on, and tossed it on the ground. She took a deep sigh and strengthened her back. She remembered what her father always said to her whenever he advised her. Fate is like a stranger, an unpopular restaurant filled with odd little waiters who serve you things you never ordered and don't always like. We cannot decide what fate gives us in life, but we can decide how it affects us. Having remembered this, Pamela wiped her face with a towel and rose from her seat. She knew that the earlier she accepted her fate, the better. She looked at her phone as it rang, but frowned and ignored the call as soon as she saw who the caller was. Eric had called her over a hundred times. The same as Naomi. They also sent countless messages, but she had no intention of talking to either of them or reading what they had to say. The deed is done, and it was time to move on. She switched off her phone and walked into the bathroom. There is a lot to do. She thought as she had a quick shower. Sitting on the front porch of her newly acquired cottage with a cup of freshly brewed cappuccino in her hand, Pamela closed her eyes as she drew in a long deep breath. The smell of the freshly built oak timber frame of the front porch and the freshly brewed cappuccino filled her senses. How time flies, said Pamela. It's been three years since she lost her family to the ill-fated plane crash. She sipped the cappuccino relishing the taste of the fresh coffee her workers just harvested from one of her farms. She smiled as she watched mockingbirds as they fly around, chirping. Such a beautiful sight, she thought. The late spring air was filled with the fresh scent of lilacs from trees surrounding the cottage, overlooking Medora. Pamela knew that North Dakota is the country's least visited state. Sandwiched between Theodore Roosevelt National Park, where wild bison roam and the state's biggest city, Fargo, in the east, she knew that this was her perfect getaway, where she could start life again on a fresh note. She had turned her back on the world she used to know. She had bought a ranch and acres of land for farming. She wanted to see life from a whole new dimension. This was the right thing to do, she thought. Poised to start on a clean slate, she had cut off all ties she once had with Naomi and Eric or anyone else. Whatever happened three years ago had sailed with the wind. She dreaded Beverly Hills. The memories she once cherished were bound to hunt her if she decided to live there. Thus, she put their mansion up for sale. She had lost the only people that mattered in her life, so the best thing was to delete whatever would remind her of her past. All she had left of her family were their graves, her dad's, mom's, Anna's, and John's, so painful a sight to behold. But life must go on, she thought, staring behind dark goggles at the freshly made marble, cascading the graves. She visited once a year during Thanksgiving. She had accepted her fate. It was either now or never. 
She smiled as she remembered the words of her favorite author, Rose Winter, and said inaudibly. Everything good or bad in my life had started and ended within the limits of that town. It was over now though, and a new chapter was beginning. Nothing would ever be the same as it had been before. I just hoped this chapter wouldn't be the final one in the book. She finished and smiled satisfactorily, and took a sip of the cappuccino. She knew a new phase had just begun. If love found her, well, she would be willing to give it a try. There was just so much to live for.